Hello again, friends. We're going to talk about what I call your fundamental airway mechanics. And the reason is because uh, we're not going to talk about airway mechanics in depth. I don't think that that's necessary for understanding uh, the points that you need to understand for basic clinical practice and uh, more importantly for the exam. Uh, but I do want to talk about it because there is one uh, very important principle in pediatrics, and that is that children are more susceptible to some of these upper airway disorders than uh, the general population. And so what I mean uh, by upper airway disorders are namely croup, uh, also uh, laryngitis, and, um, and so the question then, why is that? Why are children more susceptible uh, to these disorders? And the fact is that they're not susceptible uh, to these disorders more because they are more susceptible to the pathogens. They're actually more susceptible to these disorders and more susceptible to having uh, more significant cases because of the fundamental differences in their airway structure compared to adults. So let's talk about uh, how they're different, and uh, then I'll give you uh, an example building from those principles to hopefully illustrate and solidify your understanding as to uh, what is playing a factor in their uh, susceptibility. So the best way to understand airway mechanics is to first uh, consider the ba a basic lumen. And the laryngeal lumen of a child is, of course, going to be narrower than that of an adult just because they're smaller. Um, and the narrowest point of the airway in a child is at the level of the cricoid cartilage, which is just inferior to the thyroid cartilage. And this differs from adults. In adults, the narrowest point is uh, at the level of the vocal cords. So in children, the narrowest point is at the level of the cricoid cartilage. Now, when you think of uh, pressure moving through a lumen, differential in pressure, uh, we have something called Poisson's Law. And Poisson's Law is equal to uh, 8 times the viscosity times the length times the volumetric flow rate. Um, in other equations of Poisson's Law or other uh, variations, you can see volumetric flow rate, uh, so the V uh, substituted with Q, uh, which is just uh, uh, flow. Uh, but uh, here, when we're talking about uh, airway mechanics, we use the V because Q, which you would normally use, would be uh, is, is the equivalent uh, in, as far as physiologic notation. Q is cardiac output. So we use V here. So this is the volumetric flow rate. Um, and then uh, we take that A times eta times slam, uh, L times uh, volumetric flow rate and divide that all by pi R to the fourth. Uh, and this is our differential in pressure. Now, when we're talking about uh, when we're talking about airway mechanics, we're not so much concerned about the difference in pressure. Uh, we're, we're concerned about resistance because when the lumen gets narrowed, for instance, when there is uh, edema or swelling of the airway. Uh, it's the resistance that's going to resist air moving in and out of uh, the lungs uh, through the, the airways. And so we need to figure out how we can change this equation uh, such that uh, we have uh, an equation that tells us what our resistance is. And you can do that with j just some fundamental physics and algebra. Okay, so before we talk about that, let's just get our anatomy under uh, consideration here. So the cricoid cartilage is just inferior to the thyroid cartilage. In between the thyroid cartilage, uh, which is uh, where your Adam's apple is, uh, the thyroid prominence, uh, is the uh, median cricothyroid ligament. And this happens to be where you will make your incision uh, to do a cricothyroidotomy. The cricoid cartilage is the next prominence. So this is this is sort of a little uh, this is like a little depression point, and then the cricoid cartilage is another less prominent prominence um, that's just beneath the Adam's apple or the thyroid prominence. And this is the cricoid cartilage. And like I said, this is narrower um, in children. This is the narrowest point in children of the entire uh, trachea. So this is going to be the point of maximal resistance. Uh, now. In, uh, in adults, like I said, the narrowest point is of the vocal cords. The cricoid cartilage is the only concentric ring of cartilage in the entire trachea. And this is a good thing, because when you are doing your cricothyroidotomy, it helps because you'll have a firm uh, area of resistance, so you know you're not going to uh, penetrate the trachea when you're, uh, when you're, when you're putting through your, uh, your thyroidotomy, cricothyroidotomy. Okay. So that's enough anatomy for now. Uh, again, here, this cricothyroid membrane, this is where you are going to do your cricothyroidotomy. It's pretty easy. You're gonna make a one centimeter incision vertically, followed by a one centimeter incision horizontally, and then insert uh, your catheter from there, which is, it should be attached to a uh, bag valve, uh, and then be connected to the highest concentration of oxygen that you can get. And you'll verify your 
trichothyroidotomy by both looking at the, uh, at, at, which you should have equivalent uh, inflation of the lungs, and you can verify that through auscultation as well. Okay, so here's Poisson's law. We already talked about this. Uh, and so Poisson's law is the change in pressure equals 8 times the viscosity times the length times the volumetric flow rate, all divided by pi r to the fourth. And r is the radius of the lumen. So as the radius uh, goes down, the pressure goes up. That makes sense, right? So a smaller airway, more pressure for an equivalent volumetric flow rate. Now we also happen to know that uh, that Q is equal to delta P over R, where Q is essentially the flow. So Q can be substituted with V. So now that we know that, we know that V is equal to delta P over R. You multiply R on both sides, you get V times R equals delta P. And if we want to substitute delta P in here, then we know that uh, or sorry, if you want to substitute R in here, then we know that R equals delta P over V. We just divide both sides by V. So we know R is delta P over V. So we, um, now that we know that, um, we know that R is equal to delta P, uh, and delta P is our Poisson's equation, which is eight times uh, eta times lambda or L times volumetric flow rate, all divided by pi r to the fourth, and this is divided by uh, the volumetric flow rate. We're just taking this equation here and substituting in Poisson's equation for delta P. Okay, once you do that, your V is going to cancel out, and what you're left with is simply resistance equals 8 times the viscosity times the length, all over pi r to the fourth. So now that we know that, we know that our resistance is equal to 8 eta L over pi r to the fourth, um, then we know that assuming that everything else stays the same, and in a child, in disease, no matter what your conditions are, really your viscosity, your length are not a whole lot different. Not, not different enough to really impact uh, the resistance. And you're dealing with the same patient whether they're diseased or not. So we know anyway that resistance is going to be proportional to the inverse of the radius to the fourth power. Uh, so the change in resistance when you're talking about the change from a normal state to a diseased state is going to be proportional to the inverse of the change of the radius to the fourth power. Okay, so the smaller the radius, or the, the smaller the radius gets, the more resistance you're going to have. Hopefully that makes sense, right? You encounter more resistance with a smaller lumen. And that's to the fourth power. So that's significant here because a smaller airway, if it's diseased and has edema, uh, the smaller your airway gets, the faster your resistance is going to go up. So I think you might be able to understand where we're going with this. So a child is more susceptible to respiratory distress during obstruction because a reduction in the radius will lead to a much greater increase resistance compared to an adult. So let's put this in numerical terms so hopefully you can understand this. So here we have an adult, adult roughly the average, uh, average tracheal size. Uh, we're, I believe we're, gonna, we're taking this at the same area. So uh, the narrowest area or the cricoid cartilage, uh, which uh, I'm not sure if I got this uh, from the, the, the radius at the, uh, at the narrowest point in the adult or at the cricoid cartilage. Remember, the narrowest point in the adult is at the vocal cords, but it doesn't really matter here to illustrate our purposes. You know that the airway in an adult is going to be much bigger than a child. Uh, so we're taking roughly 10 millimeters, about a centimeter. That's the narrowest point in an adult. Uh, so 10, 10 millimeters. For a child, it's about 3 millimeters at the narrowest point at the uh, cricothyroid cartilage. Okay, so for an adult, let's say that you have a disease state. So you have one millimeter, roughly, we'll say one millimeter of, of, uh, of edema, uh, of swelling, in uh, this narrowest point. So now your radius goes down to nine millimeters because you have one millimeter of obstruction. What you can do is determine the percentage uh, of resistance increase uh, based on Poisson's law. Uh, based on our equation that we came out with. So what we're doing here is we're not we're not necessarily using Poisson's law. We're just determining the percentage change. Because remember, we're assuming everything else stays the same, the viscosity, the length, and all that. So that doesn't really none of that really comes into play because the only thing that's really getting changed is the radius of the airway. So to determine the change, you just take uh, what you are now minus what you were divided by what you were. That's how you determine percent change. So we take one over nine to the fourth minus 1 over 10 to the fourth, all over 1 over 10 to the fourth. That tells you your change in resistance. And the change in resistance for one millimeter of change uh, of decrease in radius 
uh, from a 10 millimeter to a 9 millimeter radius is 52.4% increase in resistance. Okay, so keep that in mind. We'll keep that up here. Now, for a child, if you have one millimeter of increase or of decreased radius, you go from three millimeters to two millimeters. Then the same uh, the, the same change, uh, the same decrease in radius is going to give you one over two to the fourth minus one over three to the fourth, all over one over three to the fourth. And if you do the math, that's a 408.1 percent increase in resistance. So one millimeter of edema in a child is going to give you almost eight times the resistance increase as what you would have in an adult. Now, you could change this and say, well, maybe a child might only have half a millimeter in, in edema, so a half a millimeter of decreased radius. You would still wind up with a 300 percent, 200, 300 percent uh, decrease, or sorry, increase in resistance. So it doesn't really matter. What, what matters here is that the uh, one millimeter of, uh, of decrease in radius is going to lead to a much greater increase in resistance if you have a smaller lumen. Even though it's the same amount of radius change, it's a much bigger increase in resistance if you have a smaller lumen. So even if you had half of the edema, uh, half a millimeter uh, of edema in a child, you're still going to get a much bigger increase in resistance than you would if you had uh, twice that amount of edema in the like you have in the adult. So what that means is that because a child has a smaller airway, they are susceptible to a much greater increase in resistance, and that resistance means less airflow to the lungs and hence less oxygenation. And that is why children are at increased risk for, for comorbidities, for respiratory distress, and indeed for death when they have the same disease process as an adult. It is not because of increased susceptibility necessarily to these pathogens, it is because of a difference in their airway mechanics and their anatomy. And uh, so hopefully now you can understand as we go on to talk about uh, laryngitis and croup and uh, diphtheria and uh, epiglottitis, why it is children that are going to be the most affected and at the greatest danger. And not just children, but if you compare infants to children who have an even smaller radius, they can, they're going to have a much more difficult time uh, with these disorders than older children, than teenagers, than adults. All right, so if you have any questions, go ahead and write me a note below.